Honor Alexis Puma appearing on behalf of Mr. Osorno. Mr. Osorno, could you just state your full name? Juan Osorno. Thank you. Your Honor, um, we would like to set the matter for a preliminary exam. And I would also like to address Bond briefly. Can I go ahead? You get a client, now you want to do everything, don't you? Yeah. No, I'm just <laughs> All right, let's do the exam part first. All discovery is complete. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Would people have their witnesses available the 30th? Your Honor, can we go one week out? Any objection on behalf of the defendant? No, Your Honor. Preliminary examination in person, August 6, 2024, 9 a.m. before Judge Carr. As to bond. Your Honor, um, we are seeking to have the no go to order as well as Mr. Osorno's um, GPS tether that has a hot zone at his old apartment removed. I believe APA Barroso was able to confirm that the complaining witness has moved out of that apartment. Um, and Mr. Osorno, in the meantime, has been effectively homeless um, and sleeping over the bike shop that he works at. So he would like to be able to return to that apartment that he was renting with the complaining witness. It describes that the victim is no longer residing at the apartment on the exclusion zone. I'm just right now to see if we have a new address for her so that we can update it because of the nature of this case. I am, I would not be happy about removing the tether altogether, um, but I just need to grab that address to update it. I don't have any issue with him returning back to the residence of the victim. The Carpenter Road address. Yes. Right. Okay. And then Council, you indicated something about a no contact to or um sorry, I said no go to leave the no contact order in place. Yeah, okay. No, okay. So, yeah, so it's just, just allowing him to go to All right. When he's on a tether. Correct. Is that so is it an exclusion zone tether or Yes. GPS tracking. Exclusion zone. And Your Honor, I don't believe he has any idea where the complaining witness has moved to. Okay. That I'm just trying to find the original. Uh, Well, no, I have that. I'm trying to find the original GPS order. Make sure that we Well, the tether that's on him, there's, well, on the order itself, there's no box checked. It doesn't say it's an exclusion zone, but it has the provision of the Carpenter Road. So I, I'm sure they took that as an exclusion zone tether. But you're saying that people have some objection to just removing the tether in its entirety yes your honor i was i just messaged my victim advocate to get an updated address for the victim to have the exclusion zone updated that would be my request would be to keep the gps tether with an exclusion zone for her updated address but we don't have an updated address i that's what i just yeah no but right now at this moment we don't It, it, the only reason I'm questioning whether or not the 
and maybe I'll make the decision once we have the address whether or not the tether is even necessary is because we weren't attempting to try to track him. We were only excluding him from a particular area, but that area is now not in question, but okay. Why don't we do this? I'm sure you got other places to go. Let me pass it. Let's see if we can get some information on that. And then I'll make my decision, my full decision. On what to do either come off or add a, an additional address. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. On behalf of the Overwater Assistant Public Defender on behalf of Mr. Smith. Thank you. Um, Your Honor, I'd be asked to adjourn the probable cause conference. Sit with the laces. I'm sorry? Sorry, <laughs> oh, no. What's the... That's the style? It's the style. Is it? Yeah. One of them denotes the tether. So it goes with that. Okay. I'm going to go home and do that to all my shoes now. <laughs> all right. What are we doing? Judge, uh, there's still a significant amount of discovery that's outstanding. This there should be uh, videos, probably still images that I don't have, as well as medical and medical examiner reports. So uh, I'll be asking to adjourn this uh, to a convenient date in August. Uh, I might right. speak with Mr. Childress about it. All right. Any objection for that? No, no, no. All right. You want the, I have the 13th or the 22nd, if you're looking to get some time out. I would say the 22nd, please. 22nd. Probable cause conference will be during August 22nd, 2024, 9 a.m. Bond. Before you continue, Bond, Your Honor, may I ask? Can, you want me to like make him wear shoelaces that match? No, you're not. Oh, okay. I would actually. I just. I didn't know. There are. There are. Why did you change it to? No, there's. <laughs> I would actually ask that you keep the order that he can only wear mismatched uh, <laughs> from now on. But that notwithstanding, um, he is currently on a scram tether. It's my understanding there's been no violations, and then he agrees that that remains appropriate. However, he's also ordered to to come to community corrections for testing, um, and the financial implications of that have been a struggle. He's in school, he's, he lives with his parents, they're on a fixed income, they are present here um, and supportive of him. I don't believe he has any criminal history. Um, there's no indication from anything I've seen so far that uh, there's any history of drug use or that any drugs were involved in this. This appears to be solely an alcohol issue in this case. So um, I would argue that the scram tether is sufficient to protect the community, especially seeing as he has been complying up to this point. So I would ask the court um, to remove the testing requirements at community corrections, leaving the scram tether. And of course, the shoelaces. Um, any response from the people? What is the frequency of testing? Right now, I. As I'm looking at the order, it's two times per month. So two times per month, drug testing, and then he's on a scram tether. You know, fr frankly, Ron, I, I think that that's not asking too much. This is a very basic basis. driving causing death. We have uh, similarly situated defendants who are not. Uh, you know, while alcohol was I, I do agree with mr overwater that there's no indication that anything at the time of this crash has occurred with any of an alcohol in the defendant system um i i think that twice a month is not asking too much to make sure that there aren't any other issues but there's nothing either in his history or as you see in the case that would indicate drug testings and it I mean that indicates any abuse or use of any type of controlled substance. Oh, yeah. All right. No, no, I mean he doesn't have a prior drug conviction. I'm I'm looking at a driving record, I don't see anything. So you know. And at this time his family does not possess a vehicle. So anytime he has to go to testing, he has to take an Uber there and back. Um, in addition to paying for the testing and 
they are unlimited financial means. All right. Well, here's what I'll do. I'll change it. I won't delete it in its entirety. Okay. But uh, what I'll do is I'll make it once a month random. Okay. Kind of split the baby on that just in case something happens on that. All right. Very much appreciated, Your Honor. That will gonna, certainly help. Going to need a new order on that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. You know, sometimes things in life are supposed to be a certain way. Shoelaces. Shakespeare. He had a full set of pants on. No, he did. He dressed up. He did everything he should have been. He's going to haunt me tonight. Someone does want a hint of color. Court calls case. Um, got it. Court calls case of the people versus one or so no. Assistant prosecuting attorney Morgan Burroughs on behalf of the people. Your Honor, Alexis, my on behalf of Mr. Osorno, Mr. Osorno, could you state your name one more time? Juan Osorno. All right. Um, you work in Washington County? Yeah. Okay. Lived here most of my life, Your Honor. Pardon? Lived here most of my life, Your Honor. Okay. Um, Do you have any reason to go to Taylor or Allen Park? No. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave at least at this juncture. I'm going to leave the tether in place. I'm going to have a no go to um, Allen Park or Taylor, Michigan. Okay. All right. And your Honor, just to clarify, is will the tether be set up so that if he were to drive through either of those city limits? Does he have a be... reason to go that way? Not at the moment, Your Honor. But, you know, just thinking. Well, he just needs to be, while this is pending, he just needs to be conscious of that. Under okay. Your Honor. All right. Um, I think if you're headed... I think either one of those directions, you kind of know that you're going to be traveling through. All right. Understood. Okay. And we'll send over the order on that. I'll remove the no go to provision so you can go back to the Carpenter Road. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Yeah, the court does call the case of the people versus Kareem Dean. Who's this? This is fairly, Your Honor. Hang on, hang on. No, don't take him back. You're good. You're good. The court does call the case of people versus Christopher Farrell. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. Assistant Public Defender Kassam Mulbasi on behalf of Christopher Fairley, who was present to my right. Uh, Your Honor, can you, can you state your full name for the record, please, Chris? Christopher Dewan Fairley. Your Honor, today is the day of time set for PCC. At this time, there is no offer. So uh, my client is wanting to waive his preliminary exam and seek offer as a court, Your Honor. He wishes to waive his preliminary exam. Is that correct, sir? Yes. All right. You understand that that's a proceeding where the people would have to show by probable cause that the offenses alleged were committed and that you committed them. Yes. This is you understand you'll not have that hearing and you'll proceed to circuit court for further resolution. Yes. People also with their right. Limited information having been waived, defendant is bound over to circuit court on all five counts. Governor, may we address bond when appropriate? Well, you're going to have to get the. I'm sorry, how to do the arraignment? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, we stand, uh, wait for more readings and stand mute to the charges at this time, Your Honor. Defendant, in wait for more readings, standing mute, court will enter a not guilty. Pre trial in this matter will be set for July 31st, 2024, 1 30 before Judge Conley. 
Yes, Mr. Bond. Uh, yes, Your Honor, my client is requesting a PR bond due to the fact that uh, the allegations in this case uh, happened for a year ago. Uh, my client does have three children that he needs to take care of at home. Um, he, he requesting a PR bond, and if the court deems home confinement or a tether appropriate, then the client has no issue with that, Your Honor. He just wants to get back home to his kids. Can you respond from the people? Thank you. Statutorily, the defendant is not entitled to a PR bond at the time of his arrest in this case. Uh, excuse me, at the time of this investigation, because he was arrested later, he it appears that he was on federal supervision, probation for a federal firearms conviction. The defendant has a substantial criminal history dating back to the late 90s, as far as I can see. In 2006, he was convicted of delivery of crack cocaine in Ohio in 2010. He was convicted of delivery manufacture controlled substances here in Washtenaw County in 2012. He was convicted of a federal firearms offense. In 2014, he was sentenced to federal prison for seven years, which was to be followed by three years of federal supervision. However, in 2020, he violated his federal supervision and he was then still on federal supervision in April 2023 at the time that he was dealing crack cocaine to confidential informants. The law net was able to do a search warrant of his home, which revealed uh, 11 grams of crack cocaine. When the police entered the apartment, the defendant was in his kitchen, actively trying to flush the crack cocaine down his kitchen sink. They also recovered a firearm. They had the opportunity to interview the defendant's roommate. The defendant was essentially sleeping in the living room area and paying rent in the form of cocaine to the person who was legally on the lease. The roommate disclosed to the police that in the days leading up to the search warrant, the defendant had actually committed a felonious assault on him, ordering him out of his own bedroom when the defendant was in a possession of a gun. Um, he is facing very substantial charges, and as I said, statutorily, is not entitled to a PR bond. <coughs> And also, I requested 100,000 cash already when I charged this, and his bond was set at 50,000 cash already. So he's already been given a verdict. Uh, Your, Your Honor, my response would just be the same that these allegations were over a year ago, Your Honor. We don't believe he's a further danger to the community at large. And like I said, he, he's willing to go on any form of home confinement or tether that the court appropriate, as well as any testing that the court would deem appropriate, Your Honor. He really just wants to get home to his time. Motion for bond reduction is denied. Time will continue. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, girl. Court calls the case of the people versus Kareem Dean. Yes. 